Staying alive, staying alive. Uh, 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 staying alive. Ah. This is why I say mechanics have patience like none other. Sitting here finger fucking nut. Oh, not the finger fucking. I want to be doing. Fuck. Turn it an eighth of a turn. Flip the wrench over. Turn another eighth of a turn. YouTube asks if they're swearing in these videos. You know what I say, YouTube? Have you ever tried replacing a brake booster on 2006 Silver so You'd be swearing to, motherfucker. Well, I guess you guys are coming along with me. We've got ourselves a 2006, I don't know what this is, Chevy. Yeah, Chevy, Tahoe maybe. It's something, it needs a lot of work. It's a pile of crap, let's take a look. It's got the rust holes. It's old, it's crusty. We did the courtesy inspection and showed the customer, gave the customer the recommendation and they still want to do the work. So I don't know how much of this all will document, maybe at all, but I'm gonna get all the wheels tore off here. As a run through of what we're doing here, we've got rear brakes, pads and rotors back there and front brake lines. <laughs> yeah, we're doing brake lines from the master cylinder to the ABS valve and then to both front calipers. They're pretty rusty, crusty. The rears have already been done on this vehicle, so that's what we're opting to do on this. We do have both belts and tensioners on the front. <laughs> so we'll get these wheels all tore off here. Front brakes. Pretty much brand new, so that's good. Let's get to the rear ones. So, for those that are unfamiliar with our process, we bring them in, do the courtesy inspection, let the customer make a decision. The reason we do that process is to ensure that, oh, sorry guys, ensure that the customer is making an informed decision, knowing the full details of their vehicle. This is a perfect vehicle make that example of you know it's got the issues with the frame that we found and we want to be sure that the customer is aware of that before we sell them any work uh, that's a big reason why we uh, do those courtesy inspections it does take us time we don't charge the customer for it as a result we do sell more work because of the inspections primary reason though is we just see all of the time where a customer's vehicle will come in for something, we'll do the courtesy inspection, and we'll find numerous things that, in a lot of cases, will total the vehicle. You know, broken frames, rusted out stuff. And here, somebody just put a brand new rack and pinion in, intake manifold, or some expensive repair, you know, within months of this, of these findings. And it sucks for the customer because nobody took the time to inspect the vehicle thoroughly and be sure that the vehicle was even worth doing the repairs for. So that was a big driver in us doing that. We actually, we've done inspections of different types um, for quite some time, um, but we started doing it on every single vehicle that comes in uh, some level of an inspection at the beginning of 23. And I mean, I don't know how we, how we were doing it without paying inspections before. Let's just say, there was a lot of benefits that were unforeseen doing them. Anyway, that's the whole spiel on why we do our courtesy inspections. I just, I just say this because I just heard the vehicle start up. I think the customer's just picking it up, but you know, what it is, a 89 Suburban or something like that. Came in, towed in as a no start, and thanks, just a rotten pile of crap. In that kind of case, we may choose not to do the full courtesy inspection. We'll just do a safety inspection and take care of what the customer's hiring us to take care of. Um, due to the fact that the vehicle's just simply not worth putting any money into our time that's involved in inspecting it, writing estimates for everything that we find, all of that. And you know, in those cases, we'll do a simple safety inspection. It takes us a lot less time. We document our pictures and everything in there, pre-scans, so we're covered and then move on. But those cases are fairly far and few between. 
Somebody's pad slapped this thing in the past. When I did this brake inspection, I did inspect everything, make sure the caliper is still in good shape. So it's all good to go. As you can see, somebody's removed park brake shoes, backing plates are gone, whatever the case may be. So yeah, hubs look nice and clean though. Looks like somebody's lubricated them before. So I don't think we're gonna need to do anything with that. So I like to see nice clean hub some sort of grease on there so save us a little bit of time there got a brake caliper here we're gonna throw this in the sand blaster and blast off our uh, pad slides Get a little fluid film on here. Fucking packing oil off. All right. Still good grease on there. Get it cleaned off, get some fresh grease on there. Make sure my boots are good and clean, no holes, nothing like that. You wanna make sure they're gonna seal up again. Get some super lube silicone brake lube lube up the slide pins with that so the nice part about sand sand blasting uh, caliper brackets versus you know taking a wire wheel or brake caliper file to them or something like that is the fact that I feel the sand blaster opens up the pores of the metal better than anything else um, which allows for like this brake lubricant to, you know, get down into those pores and fill them. And I honestly think that this is, I don't have any science for this, but I think that brake lube on the, on the metal is probably a better, um, corrosion resistant than paint is. Cause I feel like, especially on remanufactured calipers, the paint generally will be gone in a very short period of time. It flakes off or whatever. Got our brake pads here. Looks like all four of them have squealer tabs on them. Grab an old pad, verify they look semi-similar. That they do. The brake pads we use most of the time are perfect stops made by Bosch. I do have to say for aftermarket hardware they probably have some of the nicest fitting nicest fitting hardware. I usually don't have too big of complaints with them. Again we'll put a coating of brake lube in the slides on the shims here. But something to that effect. Oh we need some Loctite. All right, get a splash of the blue on here. Get our bracket up here. If a guy was smart, he would probably get a lug nut to hold this rotor on, but. All right, I need a socket. Oh, let's see if we can get this big old torque wrench in there. Looking for a torque spec of a hundred and 50 roughly. There we are. The beep's the word. The squealer's towards the top.
Okay. Nice snug fit. Now that we're all done, we are actually gonna throw a lug nut on here because I still gotta bleed these brakes and everything. So I wanna be sure that we don't have any metal on metal contact with this rotor. Nice and clean. And on the calipers, I like to get on these ears and piston faces. It may or may not help keep the brakes quiet, at least for a moment. Put on there. No Loctite on these. Yeah, 31 foot pounds. There you go. One side done, one more to go. done we can move on to the next job I'm thinking we will probably go do the uh, brake booster line next okay so like I said next up we're gonna change this line this brake booster line starting to leak a little bit so got to pop it off the booster there and then we're gonna have to go to the underside because the other end of it connects down below the uh, power steering reservoir. So I think first thing while we're up here on the top side, we'll go ahead and knock off that fitting right there and get that separated. Probably gonna make a little bit of a mess here, so I did get us a diaper. Stuff down underneath here. Hopefully that catches it. Probably won't, it'll probably miss. You know how it goes. Um, all right. Right, get this bad boy popped off of here. 18 millimeter up here. Well, made a bit of a mess there, but nice and easy. Now we'll go to the bottom side and make a bigger mess. Well, there's not a chance you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing up in there. So that line that loops there under the bottom I'm pointing to is the line we got to disconnect. Yeah, good luck with this one. Anyway, point is I had to reach up past all that greasy shit and get to it. So we'll see what we can do here. I may need an angled wrench or a stubby wrench or 10 other tools. This is why I say mechanics have patience like none other. Sitting here finger fucking nut. That sounds like an enjoyable experience. I don't know. I don't know what finger fucking a nut is, but I can tell you if this is finger fucking a nut, this is a fucking joke. Oh, this is not the finger fucking I want to be doing. Of course, it's not loose enough yet. To do what I'm trying to do. So we keep on doing what we do. And turn it an eighth of a turn. Flip the wrench over. Turn another eighth of a turn. 
You know, YouTube asks if they're swearing in these videos. You know what I say, YouTube? Have you ever tried replacing a brake booster line on 2006 Silverado? You'd be swearing too, motherfucker. Well, so much for that, pal. Not to worry. Uh, we could have removed it, but that would have taken thinking ahead, and that doesn't happen when you're doing brake booster lines. Ha! Ah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, fish our new one in there. Got our seals on there. Let's get her done. Let's get her done! Oh, fuck. All right. Looks the same, looks the same. Nice seals on it. God, they're flares. Oh, whatever. Fuck them. Pits. Let's fish this in and go to the bottom side so we can reverse all the work that we just did. Oh. You guys are like, God, this video sucks. I can't see what I'm doing. I can't see what he's doing. I don't think you want to see what I'm doing. Just kidding, we're going back up. Well, here's the fun part. Oh, I'm gonna commentate this since you can't see it. I just set my finger in a pile of grease, that's the fun part. I'm whispering quietly into your ear. So, I got a lot of tension on this line. And so I'm trying to hold it with one hand and take the tension off. Did I accidentally just throw that in? I'm sure I did not. I'm sure it's cross-threaded. Oh, it's not even threaded. I can just barely see what I'm doing. Mother, mother loving flipping turtles. I just can't see it enough to know if I'm straight or not. I swear to God, if somebody's like, well, you kind of just removed the differential or done some crazy shit like that. Lord help me. Shed some light on this situation. Oh my God, it goes right in there. Oh, my hand hurts so much. Wipe some of this splooge off of this freaking wrench. And my hand and my arm and the rest of my fucking body. like to snug it up just a touch more. If I can find myself a 16 millimeter wrench, just a touch longer. Just a touch. Fuck. Wrong hole, Jimmy. Why giveth me no angles? Hey, I found an angle. Okay, and we had about almost no angle of turning on that. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Nice. She's tight. Hopefully she don't leak. That's going to really suck if we got to do that again. All right. We're back to the dark side. I mean top side. All right. Get this diaper out of here. Got that started. Oh, boop, 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 boop. Be all right. Wrench this down. I got to check service information. I believe there might be a bleed procedure for this. I can't remember from the last one I did, but I don't know why they make this line so close here. It's like, geez, you got to go through and put this little extra rubber bumper on here and risk this misaligning in the bore and sealing correctly, why not just bend it a slight bit different so it doesn't contact the booster? Shit. All right, that is tight enough. That'll work. Okay, 
Well, there is actually a power steering bleeding procedure, like I thought. So, basically, the gist of it is, you know, stick this little, what the crap? It ain't gonna work. They're over here like, oh, this will work. Yeah, these, these tabs on here, they're not gonna allow that to seal. They, they literally show in service information to use this this kit and use the mighty vac vacuum well, you're not gonna be able to seal it. they want you to put this on there pull a vacuum like 20 inch pounds of mercury or whatever the fuck it is 20 inches of mercury and uh wait a few minutes then run the vehicle cycle go through that cycle numerous times and then turn the steering wheel a whole bunch of times honestly in the past i've never done that before and it's been okay because I think I remember running into this issue where these would not seal. So we're going to go ahead, start it, top off fluids, cycle the steering wheel a few times and see what happens. So another thing you can do is without the vehicle running, especially in this case since I have it lifted, you can turn the steering wheel numerous times and I can feel the air actually in the power steering area. There's a little bit of a resistance through most of the way and then it hits this air pocket steering wheel spins you know real free for a second but already just after a couple of times of doing this i can feel that air pocket getting smaller and smaller and i believe we'll actually be able to see in the fluid reservoir all the air pushing out of there which we will want to let settle out otherwise we're going to make for a really noisy system and it's going to uh be pretty unhappy and pump all that air back through there. So we'll take a look here. So yeah, and you can see all the foam, all the foam down there in the power steering reservoir. So that's from all that air pushing up out of there. So basically we'll let this settle out for a little while. Maybe repeat that process a few times throughout the afternoon here while we're doing these other jobs and get that air cleared out of there. All right, next job before we do the brake lines. Last job before we do the brake lines. I've clearly been pushing off doing the brake lines because nobody wants to do brake lines. Oh, for the ease of this, pop that cover up not further. Pop that loose. Pop that loose. Oh, somebody broke that already, so that's good. Perfect. Looking pretty. Let's grab a 15 millimeter. Yeah. Got the belts popped off. We got some new belts here. And I believe some tensioner kits. Let's see what Molly all ordered us here. AC tensioner. Idler. And this should be the tensioner. Yes, indeed. All right. Let's get down to business. So when we do serpentine belts, we generally speaking like using bando belts. Um, otherwise we do use some Napa belts. And then, and, and because of that, these belts usually last a long time. Um, so since we plan on doing that, you know, maybe a couple times in the vehicle's lifetime, we generally will recommend to the customer, depending on the vehicle, to also do the tensioners at the same time and the idler pulleys. That way, you know, we don't, especially on these GMs, they're known to be a little noisy. Um, we don't have, you know, we don't put a belt on and then have a squeal or, you know, down the road in that belt's lifetime, have a squeal. So 
That is why we do recommend it. We just leave it up to the customer with that explanation as to whether or not they want to do it. In this case, he wanted to go ahead and do it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this done for him. Get these started here. at our belt diagram here let's see I think we have something to this effect coming up around the old power steering the alternator probably behind this one maybe something like that and down around the old crank pulley she can be a cranky whore and we need a 15 millimeter um, this will come up from the crank pulley and potentially, potentially, oh fuck, hook onto that, all right, look at that, huh, I think we're cooking up peanut oil, put this back together. Something to that effect. We'll tighten those up. Come on here. You'd think we'd be professionals, but we're not. Something to that effect. Something to that effect. And let's see if we can cross thread this. Not today, Satan. Done and done. On that note, we're almost done. Not really. We got three hours worth of making brake lines to do yet. Um, however, I need to get this done this afternoon. I've got about four hours to do this if everything goes well. Replace all the brake lines, bleed the brakes, flush the rear brakes. So we got a fiasco to do here. I appreciate you guys watching, following along, fixing up this soul turd for another go around. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you don't mind, head down to the comment section, leave a comment, whatever it might be. Give the video a like and have yourself a mighty fine day. Hey.